last 20 years, the reenactment has really grown. And now, if you're into, into history, you can dress up as a Roman right the way through to World War II, do whatever you want. However, amazingly enough, the, the, the tactics used by the, the police 17 years ago are very reminiscent of, of things I'm very familiar with. They're very similar to actually medieval and Roman tactics. The reenactment itself, then, all reenactments are, are recreations as close as we can make them. But things have changed since 1984 in terms of the ground at Orgreave. Now, in 1984, all this open cast mine was actually the coke plant just there. After the coke plant closed, it became a mine, and this lake heaps and the actual open cast mining has moved about. But basically, everything this side of Orgreave is literally now a big hole in the ground. So what we've actually done is to move our battlefield from over here where it was, across the railway bridge, and into this field here, which is just behind the houses that played quite an important role in 1984. Can I just ask for a show of hands to see how many of you were actually there in 1984? So it's quite a significant number, okay. This is a recreation, not a refight. <laughs> I remember watching it on TV when I was 17 or 18, I was at school, and it made an impression upon me there of just the horses going through, all those iconic images of riots. But I just, it was a, a, kind of a moment of realisation for me, looking at that and just thinking, well, there's something seriously wrong with this country, if this is what we have to do to people. And how do you feel about the reenactment? I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, mate. It's going to be, be a good experience, I think, to relive it. I mean, we're only a young lad at times, and I think I was only 20 at times. So, uh, have you got permission yeah. We have. We've got permission from several house owners to actually run in and actually go into the house. So if you actually did that, it would be great. Well, I went over edging behind edging. Somebody comes to the door and says, what are you doing? I says, is it all right to stay here? And I said, yeah. And I slipped. I tripped and I sprained my ankle. I was in agony and I was in agony. I thought I broke it. I, was, I couldn't move. And I said to this bloody copper, you can arrest me. I can't bloody move, right? So that day there was a big picket. A lot of Scots and Geordies. By the way, I live in Doncaster. I said to this copper, you can arrest me, pal, and get me some bloody first aid. I said, I don't want to arrest you, cop. I want you to fucking crawl out of Yorkshire and don't come fucking back. I mean, our coppers were all right. It was Met and Army. I mean, they brought a lot of Army in there. And it was them and Met were the aggro with. When our coppers were on, you could tell it were our coppers because they were just standing fags out. I was ready for it, lads. They come in to win. And then we used to have a jostle with them. But when Met were on, it were up front. It were really nose to nose sort of thing. So they were two different sides, like I said. People are excited, I think, which I think is the best thing, and they're enthusiastic, which is half the battle. And I think it's because no one has spoken about these things in public for quite a long time, yeah. and there's a lot of things that still have to be resolved. My argument is, is, is not the, the technical data of what, of what the government was planning in that particular time, it's, it's what's happened after. Um, they've, they've still allowed um, all the pits, um, in particular in Yorkshire, and indeed all over the coalfield, to close. Um, and there's been no real opposition towards that. I worked in Pete until it stopped, and then uh, I've been a milkman since, and now I'm a oil mill driver now. We're going fishing, we're going fishing, we're going to Trent. We're all done towers, mate. What, at five o'clock in the morning? Let's set up a retail.